How do you know when you're having an MS attack as compared to just having worsening chronic symptoms as compared to just having a really bad day? In this video, we're going to tackle that topic. Don't turn away because all that starts right now. Hey. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I wanted to share with you a recent discussion that I had with a patient. I think there's a lot that we can unpack and take away as learnings. This nice lady has had MS for many years. She's very smart and very uh, participatory in her own MS care. And I had a very nice telemedicine visit with her. I started off by asking her, is anything new going on? Nope, all the same stuff. I said, is any of your old symptoms worse? Nope, everything's about the same. I said, oh, well, what's going on day to day? She says, well, I'm having some difficulties doing things. Tell me about that. She said, well, this hand doesn't work very well. And she shows me her hand and she really can't move it. And I said, well, how long has it been like that? She said, well, it was a little bit weak, but recently it's gotten really weak and I, I can't do stuff. And in fact, I've noticed I've started to do more and more things with my right hand. I said, anything else? She said, well, now that you bring it up, my, my foot on the same side has been misbehaving. I said, well, what do you mean? She goes, well, it sometimes will drag or it'll catch and it's caused me to fall a couple times. And when I put my shoes and socks on, I can't really feel it. I said, how long has that been going on? She says, well, the foot thing's only been for a couple weeks. I asked her if she had any other symptoms and she didn't. I asked her if she had had any recent infections and she did not. I shared with her that it sounds like she's having an MS attack. And she was taken off guard. She said, really? She said, I don't feel like I'm having an attack. And we discussed the definition of an attack. It's when you have a new neurological deficit or an old deficit that's been away for a long time and come back, which lasts for longer than a day and occurs in the absence of a fever. And so that's the situation that I found us in. This nice lady had not had an infection and we subsequently checked her urine and made sure she didn't have an occult UTI. She had a new neurological symptom, her foot, and worsening of a baseline symptom, her hand. And it had been going on for much longer than a day in the absence of an infection. She was taken aback. She said, oh my gosh, I didn't think about that. And that's the point of this video. Being a patient is challenging. It's hard. It's challenging to try to interpret your own body's experiences and to be able to translate them into English in a succinct, concise manner that your doctor can understand. And I don't begrudge her that she wasn't able to sort that out. I don't think poorly about that at all. On the contrary, I wanted to discuss it because I think that all too often uh, things don't slap us in the face. And this is an example of where by communicating we were able to ferret out that something wasn't right. I'd like to discuss a couple tricks and tips that I think can help people as they navigate their symptoms and optimize the communication with their clinician. So let's talk about that now. One tool that I think is very helpful is starting an MS journal. It's a good idea, in my opinion, to write down a skinny summary of the symptoms that led to your diagnosis, the dates surrounding them, which tests were ordered and when and what those results were in your own words and when you were given a formal diagnosis i would include what they said and maybe even who the clinician was as you move forward in time when there are major events god forbid if you have an attack i would write down the date and i would describe it briefly i would talk about whether you were given steroids and then how much you recovered if you at some point need an assist device to ambulate, like let's say that it becomes smart to start to use a cane so that you're more stable and don't fall, write the date down that you started to use the cane. As you are placed on an MS medicine, write down the date that you started that medicine. If there are side effects to the medicine, make a note of those side effects. And if you're taken off the medicine, write down the date that you were taken off and why you were taken off. Now this might seem a little tedious, but when you consider that we're going to be managing your MS literally over decades, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, remembering the details of the time of your symptom onset or remembering which tests were ordered at the time of your diagnosis or remembering the details about an attack 20 years ago can be really challenging. And so that journal becomes super, super important. 
I would bring it with you when you attend your doctor's office. And that way, if there's a question, you can say, hold on, you can flip back through it and say, here's the answer. And that can be very, very powerful. A second helpful tool is to prepare a, a sheet of paper with notes for that specific visit. Now, when I prepare to see someone in clinic, I prepare in a similar fashion. I go through their chart, I look through their old imaging, I look through their laboratories, and I put together notes about what I want to talk about and what my top questions are. I recommend that you do the exact same thing. Spend a few minutes and write down all your questions, write down a list of your medicines and their current doses, and anything that you want to make sure the doctor knows about, and bring that into the visit with you. It becomes a very helpful tool if things are discombobulated or a little bit haywire and, and you're a little uh, flustered or maybe the doctor's rushed. You're not going to forget because you have it right on that piece of paper and you can say, wait, doc, I have two questions here I really want to ask you. By keeping an MS journal and by making a set of notes in preparation for your doctor's appointment, I think that you can up your game of communication with your clinician. Being an MS patient isn't easy, but you don't have to do it by yourself. You have your MS clinician, and you're a powerful team. The tips that I've provided, in my opinion, help improve that teamwork. If you would like to learn more tricks and tips to up your MS game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video, or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.